when your injury worries this week, injury problems, yep. have you got any more to tell us about today? <laughs> Thankfully, no. We've, we've had enough to deal with pre-camp and, and during camp. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's been a frustration of ours for months now, Rob, and, and unfortunately it's something that we just have to deal with. You know, we haven't got as many players playing domestic football week in, week out as we'd like. Um, it just happens to be that we've had a few defenders pull out this camp, uh, really important ones as well, because not fringe players, you know, players that have been a big part of the success we've had in recent months and years. So that is a frustration. And, and at the minute, you know, the full backs and wing backs are, um, are not 100% fit, and we're having to manage that as well through this week. So it's difficult. Yeah, with Connor Roberts, uh, are Burnley saying owe me so many minutes if you can possibly do that? Yeah. Um, well, I, actually, the, the, I, I don't think they were too keen for him to come on camp. So Connor's shown absolute um, loyalty, whatever you want to call it, commitment to the cause, and he's, he was adamant he was coming away. And But we have to we have to be respectful to Burnley. We have to be respectful to, to Connor and his needs. Realistically, Rob, he's played 45 minutes. He's, sorry, he's played 45 minutes f between now and the game against Denmark. And after he came back from that, he's had a slight uh, thigh strain. So this is his first two, three days back on the grass. So, you know, we have to manage that and be and be realistic in our expectations with him. So it might mean Sober Thomas, who made a big impression this week, might get a mm. bigger chance to uh, make an impression on the pitch. Well, yeah, we've been impressed with Sober, absolutely. And, and he hasn't surprised me. That's the reason he's in the squad, you know, because we've uh, we've been out and numerous, many, many of us have watched him over, over the recent weeks and months now. And... Uh, and he has impressed. Now, whether he starts or not is, is something I'm going to keep close to my chest. But uh, all he can worry about is how he trains. And, and yeah, he's, he's done really well. What about Aaron Ramsey then, Rob? Mm. Um, he's not played many minutes, but he is there. He's with you now. What are you hoping for from him over the next two games? Aaron's trained really well. You know, and, and like I said in, in recent interviews, Aaron's learning now the older he gets to manage his body from a conditioning point of view and, and he's taken upon himself to to employ you know other other physios and, and fitness coaches to to maintain that level that he's that he got us to in the Euros in the summer um, he hadn't played many minutes coming into the Euros and, and it was all there for everybody to see the levels he got to and the consistency throughout the, the tournament that he got um, so I expect exactly the same from him on this camp uh, and obviously without Gareth Bale he is he is a major player for you isn't he so is it time for him now to really step forward and take the mantle? Well, it's like he has done in the past, Rob. Yeah, when <clears throat> when you've got those two players on the team sheet, opposition managers stand up and take note. No different. Like right? We haven't got Gareth on this occasion, but you know we've, we've got DJ that's playing top football at the minute and, and enjoying his football, and he looks, again, great in training, and, and Kiefer's you know, a constant threat. And, and when you've got people like Aaron again on the team sheet, um, you know, like I said, opposition managers will, will take note. Big games, you want your big players, and, and Aaron again hasn't disappointed us in, in recent months and years with helping us qualify for the Euros with the two goals. And, and you know, like I said, big games, he, he steps up to the plate, and this is a big game for us. Who's your captain and why, Rob? Yeah, Rambo's captain. So, um, you know, I don't think I'm going to surprise too many there. So, um, you know, I, I just think you, you see him train again today and when he's out there he's you know he just he does you know he inspire the players he absolutely does and uh, and I think after Baylor I think he's the he's a natural one for me and then but Rob like I've said in the past I've got Chris Gunter who's an absolute leader he doesn't need to wear the armband I've got Joe Allen in the middle of the park I've got Danny Ward I've got an abundance of senior players in that changing room that are superb they don't need the armband but for me for this one it'll be Rambo Yeah, he's the natural choice. Yeah, he's a different stage of his career now. You know, we were talking a few years ago when, you know, complete focus should have been on just him, him going to enjoy his football and playing. And, you know, he's, he's with a different group of players now. You know, there's, you look how the, the group's getting younger and younger every camp we, we have. So um, he's one of the senior players. And like I said, for me now, he's, he's ready for that responsibility as well. And last topic for me, Rob. There's been a lot of talk about players having COVID vaccines. Yeah. You said when you announced your squad, you were doubling down on the measures to prevent COVID in the camp, like what happened last time. Um, have you spoke to the players about vaccines? Do you know how many of your players have been vac vaccinated? Yeah, I haven't got that 
the, the exact figures, Rob, but absolutely our medical team will, will know um, exactly how many of our players have been vaccinated and, and haven't. And the staff, you know, we're all in that same boat. So um, I can only control what I can control. And that means I can, uh, we go back, to, you know, the single rooms and with the, the protocols that we have in place, I can control that. We can control that as a staff. Um, whether the players have been double vaccinated or not, I can't control that. It's down to them as individuals and human beings. So it's frustrating because there's only one way out of this for me, and that's for everybody to be double vaccinated, and it reduces the risk considerably of, of getting the virus. So it's frustrating, but you have to respect everybody's individuals, and they've got their own reasons for doing it, and, and, that's, and that's it. Rob, all the best. Thanks. Cheers, Rob. Thank you. Hi, Graham. Good, thanks. Good. Um, can you just tell us a little bit more about the, the nature of the illnesses with, with Ben Davis and David Brooks? That, that they're not COVID related? No, they're not COVID related. No, no. And I don't want to go into too much detail with it. It's, they're both illnesses that uh, have ruled them out for this camp. And, and like I said, two great players, two great players that have been an important part of the success we've had in recent months. And, uh, and they'll be sorely missed. All I can say is it, it, it's stomach related, yeah. So he's he's been suffering with cramps and uh, and 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 not being able to get on the grass, you know, because of the pain that's that's caused him. So um, they've done all the investigations they need to do. He's now slowly doing some exercise, but again, I think for yesterday was his first day on grass. So you know, to throw him into this camp would be, uh, yeah, would would be would be crazy for him. I can't speak for Juventus' manager and, and the staff and the, and the team out there. All I know is I've got a great player and, and it, it, we've all seen glimpses of what he's capable of doing in the summer and I thought he was outstanding and I've been working with him closely for probably the first time in, and, and, you know, in, in an intense environment. Um, it, it is a crying shame that he's not playing week in, week out. I'd love to see him in the Premiership. He, he deserves to be playing week in, week out in the Premiership and the supporters need to be watching him and seeing what he's capable. You know, we watch him in training today. He, he does things that make you, you know, it, it takes your breath away. So um, we all know what he's capable of doing and he, you're right, he should be playing week in, week out, but that's my opinion. Has he spoken to you about his frustrations of, of the last few months? Yeah, I've had, I've had chats throughout the summer with him um, and, and I'm, I'm, you know, I want to support him in any way I can. You want your best players playing week in, week out, whether that's in Italy, Germany, Spain, um, in the Premiership, you want your players playing, and uh, and I'm always I'm always there for every single player in that in that team, and and they do they contact me quite regularly and, and run things by me, and uh, you know they want to be a part of this world set of moving forward as well, um, and they know the importance of playing domestic football. So Aaron's no different, but we have had we have had conversations, and uh, he wants to be playing like everybody else. Another player who's been a big player for you in the last couple of years has been Chief for more. Yeah. He's only scored one goal, I think, in 13 games for Cardiff this season. How much of a concern for you is that? No, when you look at all the, the, the outside factors regarding that, you know, he's not had a, a clear run through pre-season. He's, not, he's been affected two or three times by COVID, which has mean he's, meant he's had to isolate and miss training. And, and when you do that to any player, it's going to affect your performance, absolutely. So I'm not overly concerned with that. Um, he's getting back up to speed now. He's played more minutes for Cardiff in the last couple of weeks than what he's done all season. So, yeah, inevitably we know he's a threat. He's a goal scorer. He's one of our main goal scorers and main threats and, uh, and a big part of what we want to do again moving forward. And, and, and yeah, he'll, he'll get better and better as the days go on. How much of a tactical uh, switch is it without Gareth Bale for you? I mean, so much obviously flows through him. So much is the end product for, for you from him as well. Is, is there a big tactical shift for this game? No, if you want to keep the same shape, you just go, you know, um, like for like. You put a replacement in. Um, we've got one eye on on the opposition, opposition in the Czech Republic. It's a game we want we want to be positive in. We want to we want to go and win the game. Um, so we'll we'll pick a team that we think will go out and do that. Um, whether we change formation or not is. Is, is something that we'll, we'll have a look at because we're up against, like I said, a very good team, but we know we, we can get the win as well. So, you know, I want, I want to be positive in our formation and, 
uh, in the personnel and, and go for the win. And just lastly from me, Rob, um, we've seen in the last few weeks, particularly last week, when Rangers played in Prague, mm. that in Stadia over there, racism is still a problem. We saw that with, with Glenn Kamara last week. Um, is that a big concern of yours? And, and what is the strategy if that, if that comes about again? Again, there's... there's Protocols put in place. Every player, every single player in that change room will know that they're absolutely backed and supported by the right governing bodies. And if action needs to be taken, we absolutely will as a group. Um, we won't stand. We won't got zero tolerance for for any racial abuse that the players go through. We will absolutely take the knee because that's what we think is the right message to continue to show. And how the crowd react well, again we can't influence that all we can do is is influence what we do on the pitch and and conduct ourselves in the right and proper manner so uh, us as a group of players and group of staff we know how to conduct ourselves we know what's acceptable and what's not can't influence the crowd if if they if they boo at least we're showing the same message moving forward and uh, anything beyond that we'll we'll fully support the players gareth bale said uh, to us a month ago that, that walking off the field was still an option he felt that should be in, in the armory for, for players. Um, is, it, is that an option for your team? Of course it is. If, if it's that bad and we think it's completely unacceptable, the, the abuse that the players are getting, I'm not going to have my group of players out there subjected to that. So, yeah, absolutely, we all stand together. And, uh, and if, if it needs to be done, then we'll absolutely prepare to do it. Thanks, Rob. Cheers, thank you. Yeah, <clears throat> I was quite critical of it first off, Tom. I was, I thought it was more of a, a, a sort of inconvenience, you know, with the, the smaller group of players that we had. But um, it, it might have benefited us this camp because we might have got players coming into it that have needed more game, ta game time, but haven't been able to have that domestically at their clubs. And for whatever reason, we might have been able to use that the top minutes up, like we've done in the past in the summer pre Euro. So, yeah. Um, it's just ironic, isn't it? That the time we really want that game, we don't have it. But, um, you know, again, it is what it is. We've got two great games coming up. Um, a big one against the Czech Republic on Friday and, and we're fully fully committed to that one now and ready for it. Um, obviously, you're calling up uh, Sorba Thomas. Uh, what mm. message you know, does that send, send out to other young players or players that haven't been picked yet for Wales that, you know, a good run of form could potentially see you called up? Yeah, positive message, of course. You've only got to look at the average age of the group that we've got. I've just said uh, previously that the, the age of the group is, is getting you know, younger and younger. Um, Sorba's a young lad himself, 22 years old, and, and has, has in adversity come, come out the other side, you know, being released from a, from a top club in West Ham at a young age and showing the resilience to, to bounce back again. And, and he's now playing championship football and, and being acknowledged for that and getting championship player of the month and, and, and doing really well. So the message has always been consistent, even you know from when Ryan took over and, and myself now, is that it doesn't matter about age. If you're good enough to play and, you, and you're playing well, then you, you're going to get a chance. We'll fast track you through. The final one for me, uh, Will Volts uh, is called up after, I think, a, a year out as a Welsh setter. Um, he had obviously a, a decent run at Cardiff, uh, played regularly towards the end of last season. How unlucky was he not to go to the Euros and, uh, you know, how uh, you know, and a word of his uh, reselection and this time Yeah, it's, it's difficult when you've got to pick a group of players to go into a tournament environment. That's the hardest thing. It's disappointing players. Um, and he was one of them. He falls into that category, of course. And there was others that we that we took away to, uh, to Portugal and then we had to disappoint after. So, yeah, it's, it's all part and parcel of football and international football. Um, there was a way we played uh, in previous games that have got us a success. So we, if it's... You know, if, if you've got a winning formula, you don't change it. Uh, and unfortunately, he felt he, he saw himself out of the squad while we were winning games and doing well. Uh, at this moment in time, with the physicality of, of the next couple of games as well, I think that will, will add something to the group, and hence why I've now called him back into the group. Thanks for all the best. Cheers, thank you. Thanks, Tom. Shona Babbage? Hiya, Rob. You okay? Hi, Shona. All good, thanks. So apologies of my connection. Okay. Um, how, how crucial is it as a group that you know you keep your faith in 
in your own hands um, because it's, there's no doubt this game on Friday, it could be the decider in terms of who finishes second in this group. Yeah, when you look at the remaining fixtures that we've both got, obviously this is, you know, it's a must-win game for us. If, if we want to guarantee to finish second, you know, we can't control what happens after that. But um, for us to take, like you said, Destiny into our own hands, then we, we want to win this game. Um, and we're doing everything possible. The preparations have been great. Um, and we give ourselves the best chance to win this game. The game at home back in March, even though a lot has happened since then, how much confidence will that give you that you have managed to beat this very strong Czech side before? Yeah, th listen, they, they, they were a very good outfit on the night and we've, you know, we've, we've spent the last couple of days looking back over some of the footage of that game. Um, some that's relative to how we want to play against them away from home as well. They're very, very attack-minded. At times they'll attack with six. Both fullbacks are very, very positive and, and at times they're the highest players together on the pitch. Two wide men come inside and they try to overload the middle of the park, so we have to, you know, we, we'll, we'll have to cater for that as well. But, but like we've proven in the past, we know that with, with the team that we've got that's going to go out, it will, will give us the best chance to win that game. And we'll respect them for what they are. They're a very good outfit. They're robust. They're big. You know, they're athletic. They've got quality, but, but so have we as well. So it'll, it'll make for an entertaining, interesting game. You know, tactically-wise, you've got a player like Patrick Schick, who is fantastic at the Euros. What will be, I guess, the game plan to keep him quiet on Friday? Yeah, he's a fantastic player. You've named one of maybe four or five others. They've had four pullouts, two, two really important players for them. Um, so Schick just falls into that category as well as, as, a, as a top player. He's proven his worth in the summer, in the Euros. And we'll have to be at our best to, to, you know, to compete with him. But uh, we've got top defenders there as well that, that have come across opposition like him. Um, so we'll be fully ready to um, pit their wits against him then, yeah. Absolutely, yeah, and I don't think you'd be surprised by me saying that. He's, he's blended in with the group really, really well. But when you've got a group of players like we've got, it, that's made easy for him anyway. There's no egos in this changing room, absolutely not. They've welcomed him in with open arms. Um, he settled in really quickly. He had to sing his song like every newcomer does um, and, and done all right and done really well. He's quite confident with it. So, yeah, he's, the group have taken to him and he's taken to us. So he's, he's a good lad. I knew you were going to ask me that. I was asked that the other day as well. I can't remember. I can't remember. Couldn't have made that much of an impression on me then, could it? <laughs> That's fine, Rob. Thank you very much. Safe travels. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, on, uh, Beth Fisher. Hey, Rob. Hi, uh, Beth. I spoke to uh, Connor earlier in the week, and yeah. this was that qualifying is a little bit like the Euro snip. Not, not the best of starts, but do you believe with these games now, two at home, that you know it is, it is definitely still a, a bird for grabs? Yeah, absolutely. We're going for the second spot, and uh, and this is this is a must-win game if we want to take control, absolute control of that. So, looking at the remaining fixtures that we've got, of, co of course they're winnable. Um, but yeah, uh, we're just fully prepared for this game on Friday first, and, and full focus is on that. Does the fact that you have this spot as well with the Nations League um, mm. that you did last year, does, does that? What, what kind of message or kind of mindset does that give you, knowing that you, you will, have, will have a second chance as well? Yeah, maybe you can take more of a chat, more of a gamble, more chances, um, knowing that you're pretty much guaranteed a playoff place anyway. So yeah, that's that's good to have that as an insurance policy. But we still want to finish second um, with what we've got in the changing room and, and what we've done so far. We want to uh, we want to achieve that second spot. And just a note on Sorba. I mean, I mean, he's been quite kind of the, the impact on us as journalists this week, and that is the magic of Wales, isn't it? That you get stories and characters probably more. Than, you know the big the big teams. And I just want to know your thoughts on on what that means for Wales and, and, and your squad. Well, I think it's a great story what Sorba's done. He started off at West Ham's academy. He had the disappointment of being told he weren't going to make it as a professional footballer, and showed resilience then to go and play non-league football at Boreham Wood. He had four or five good seasons there, and and bounced back, and is now playing his his football championship level and doing really really well. I've had him watched. Um, you know, obviously we've we've done our work on him and found out that. He's Welsh and uh, and monitored him then for some weeks, and 
like I said, the rest is history. Then he's come into the group and, and give a good account of himself, and he's a good lad. And just last one for me. Obviously, the luck you've had with players being injured or, or illness or whatever, it's not been on Wales' side. You've had to link in travel and, and um, you know, DNA and all those types of tests. Are you hoping that the luck falls on your side on the pitch for these next few games? I think we deserve it. I do. I think we deserve it. I think we've, you know, we're not, we're not ones in the group have not mentioned it. We're not sitting here grumbling and... And, and complaining about things, we, we just get on with it. That's the mentality of the players we've got in there. They're a good group. Um, but we have had our, our difficulties. We haven't got an abundance of, of players that, let's say, England have got, you know, the, the pool of players. So we, we need our best players fit, playing every week. We've had to manage that in recent months as well. We haven't always had the players playing domestic football week in, week out. So that first friendly that we've had, we, we've used that at times to, to sort of get the minutes into their legs for the two qualifiers. So it hasn't been easy, but like I said, we're not going to complain. We've got a group of players ready to go and perform against the Czech Republic on Friday.